Hello everyone and welcome. This is our science and technology series and today we are going to study about intellectual property rights. Now this is a mains related topic but yes some schemes are there in this and there are many conceptual part also. So we'll be discussing everything and let's get started. So intellectual property first uh, we will understand what is intellectual property and then in the same slide only we will understand what is intellectual property right. So according to the world intellectual property organization which is uh, you can say sort of a WHO or United Nations for world intellectual property they define intellectual property all right as something created by someone's mind. Now a person's mind can create a lot of things, they can invent new things, they can create new symbols like uh, the Indian rupee symbol is also a creation of somebody's mind. Alright, uh, the medicines, medicines that we are using nowadays, they are all somebody's creation. So all these things are intellectual property. Intellectual means related to your mind, thinking mind. Property means it belongs to you, something that is yours. Now you can understand this by relating it to physical properties like land, house, car, bike, cycle, uh, cricket bat, right? Skipping rope, something like this. All these things belong to you, right? But again, for some things you don't need a paper to say that it is yours. But for buying a house, buying a land, buying an automobile for all these things you need an authority to say yes okay this particular thing belongs to you similarly for intellectual property also you need protection so that somebody does not steal it example if you're staying in your current home and if you don't have the proper papers of course anybody can say that it is not your home but that is not the truth right Similarly, if you create something out of your mind, like a story, song, uh, new symbols, or new product, or new, or you invent a new type of bulb, <clears throat> all these things will be taken away by somebody else if you don't put your name to it. So that is is what is called an intellectual property right. That means whatever thing that you have created, you have a right over it. And that is why in, we are studying intellectual property rights. All right, I hope you understand. You can simply take an example of your home. You have a right over your home. You have a property, right? <clears throat> you have a right over that property. So please remember, this is similar to that. It is only the creation of mind. The only difference is it is creation of mind and that is something physical. So what is intellectual property rights? It is basically a singular right. That means you have the only right on something and this is protected by law. But one issue is in intellectual property right, the rights will not go on for unlimited number of years. They will stop at some point. That means, for example, in India, patent is given for 20 years. So it is not given for 100 years. Why? Why is this so? Because we need to strike a balance. The society needs to strike a balance between giving the uh, basically benefit to the innovator and the benefit to the society. If we keep the patent like for 100 years, then the innovator can, uh, can ask any price from anybody. Let me give you an example. Let's say there is a medicine. And for that medicine, somebody gets a patent for 50 years. Now for 50 years, the person A has all the rights. This person can give the right to somebody for a fee. But, and also they can charge, like I said, they can charge for it. But the thing is, he might or she might put up a very big charge. Like it will not be cheap. So general uh, generic companies or general people might not be able to buy that medicine only rich people might be able to buy so which is unfair right to the society at large because what are you innovating for you're in it innovating for the society only na? 
of course you are innovating for your own self to earn money yes of course but in the end it should be benefited to the larger society also so what does patent do or what does intellectual property right do they have reduced this to 20 years so for 20 years the innovator can have the exclusive right of producing that thing nobody else can produce it if the owner wants they can give the rights to somebody else also for a fee but after 20 years that technology becomes open to the world <clears throat> all right so this is the thing that we need to balance we need to strike a balance between the innovators and the uh, ben or let's say benefit to the innovators and the benefit to the society now these come from where such intellectual property rights they are outlined in the article 27 of universal declaration of human rights this right says that the benefit from the protection of the interests from the authorship should be there basically if a person creates something artistic literary or scientific their protection should be there the interest or the creation should be protected that's it also uh, just for your information the importance of intellectual property was first recognized by the Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property in 1883. So such things have been recognized since so long. Berne Convention, 1886. Now both the treaties are administered by World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. Now this WIPO is important and we are, India is a signatory. All right, India is a member to WIPO. Now before moving on, uh, just to explain you a little bit, I would like to give you a perspective. See, modern world is set up on capitalism for the most part, right? So basically everything has been commodified. Everything is bought and sold. Commodification means uh, bought and sold. All right. Everything like uh, clean air has been commodified by Kyoto protocol. Water is uh, chargeable at most locations, right? You can get uh, Himalayan glacier water by paying more. All right. Uh, electromagnetic spectrum you know, is uh, auctioned by government. So basically, all of these things are, you know, sold thanks to IPR only. Intellectual property, right. So it is necessary that a person who invests in knowledge, who invests in uh, their own time to invent something they should get profit from their investment because they invest a lot of time energy money right they put in a lot of years of their life to invent something so basically the person should get the profit from their investment right this is also something very moral like if i am creating something it i should also i should be at least the first one to get the benefit out of it little selfish but i think this is also moral this is also fair right for example hepatitis c medicine let's take an example of hepatitis c medicine when people were taking it earlier before a medicine was invented it was a very difficult medicine to have it was very hard on the body people had to uh, take it for years and years and it uh, basically it was very hard on the body all right but now that all has changed thanks to a medicine called sophos buvir sophos buvir by gilead now this medicine would not have come by if there were no intellectual property rights because people want to benefit from their hard work so now this medicine can be just taken orally right and it is also not that hard on the body so it is very difficult to imagine that if there were no intellectual property rights, then this medicine would have invented. So it is very doubtful. Now this is the one side. Okay. Now coming to another side, role of state. Now IPR is very good in terms of uh, protecting the innovators, protecting the scientists or artists, right? So that innovation prospers. All right. So in terms of this, it has a very good value because with innovation only, I am able to talk to you right now. 
right through the technology through the spectrum and so on through the internet basically but we need to consider about the society also society by large should also be benefited from the outcomes not just the innovator and so that is why patents are granted basically 20 years on any new product after the expiry of 20 years such patents basically expire and the general society can exploit the patent or basically expired patent so the product becomes open to all this is basically something like open source uh, software is there that can be used by anybody so after patent if the thing becomes open source you can use it anyhow right here i would like to give you an example that indian pharmaceutical industry is known as the world leader in generic drugs this is why uh, this is why you know because after the expiry of patents lot of drugs became free to use and free to manufacture and india has used almost every medicine which is available with, which is without patent and which is available and produced it all right so 20 years law it uh, protects the private right also but it also ensures that after 20 years everybody is getting the benefit out of it all right sorry was slide skipped anyways so this is the part about society we need to understand that society is the in, in society should be the end benefic beneficiary and how it can be done this can be done by the role of state now after giving the example now i hope you'll understand because 20 years is decided by the law so this is the role of the state like state has to intervene a little bit they have to create law and order that will protect citizens right <clears throat> because the person who is innovating they are not doing it uh, like they're in their own lab silently no they are taking resources from the nation they are taking electricity they are using knowledge that is available no one person invents anything in silo that means they don't invent any everything in a cave they uh, the person who is inventing obviously studies about everything that is available in the world and then tries to invent something new so of course since they are living in a society so their invention should also help the society like this all right so we need to understand this is the role of the state that they have to create and protect citizens right society uh, i have told you about all right but not everybody is in favor of you know protection by the state some people say that <clears throat> since they live in society they should uh, innovate freely and then uh, not uh, demand such 20 years monopoly okay but <clears throat> you have to uh, be fair to everybody you have to create a balance so this 20 year timeline is a balanced one all right you should uh, you should understand that <clears throat> because of ipr regimes only like i gave you an example right so for the gilead maxi uh, the gilead medicine that came out because of IPR only, right? So knowledge, final perspective is knowledge knows no boundaries. Hence, it is not enough that you not uh, only domestically something is protected. We need to have a proper international regime which protects the right of every inventor and ensures that society gets the benefit at the end. This is very important. So final perspective is what? We need to have... <coughs> in this globalized world we need to have a universal protection not just domestically protected uh, patent laws but international regime something that is truly globalized all right so if something comes on this uh, basically this is the understanding now you will be able to appreciate ipr so anything comes like this you can pick the role of state uh, role of society and role of innovator now this is how you need to understand mains related uh, related topics all right i hope you have understood this now let us briefly see lot of things related to ipr now see international treaties you don't have to remember them only two are important paris and bern uh, uh, rest of them uh, some of them you have heard about it and others are not that important 
So Paris Convention for Industrial Property 1883, this is important, covered only patents and trademarks. Bern Convention for Literary and Artistic Work 1886, copyright, it covers copyright. <clears throat> like I said also, the importance of IPR was first recognized in this Paris Convention and Bern Convention and both are administered by WIPO. Now there is Madrid Agreement, Patent Cooperation Treaty, then Budapest Treaty of 1980, this is patenting for microorganisms, Trademark Law Treaty 1994, uh, Service Marks in the ambit of Trademarks. Earlier only goods were covered, now services also are covered. International Union for Protection of New Varieties of Plant. This provides breeders and farmers right to a new plant variety. Uh, so if a farmer develops a new plant breed in their own uh, farm, then they have a right to it. Agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property. This is most comprehensive treaty on intellectual property. This is important and we'll see that briefly. Of course, it is uh, the part of your international relations. But here I would like to just mention what is relevant for us. <clears throat> now TRIPS uh, came out as a result of discussion which were held in Uruguay round and which led to formation of WT also. This is administered by World Trade Organization. Right. So basically in this there are minimum standards of intellectual properties or basically regulations which are applied to the members of WTO. Okay, it deals with eight kind of property rights, patents, trademarks, trade dress, copyright, industrial design, plant, varieties, integrated circuits, layouts, geographical indication. All right. Almost all countries are party to TRIP. In earlier treaties, only limited countries participated. So TRIP is the most comprehensive one. Okay, it provides for an enforcement mechanism which was not there earlier also. It mandated all members to make the domestic laws compliant to TRIPS. So this is a very important point because whenever some dispute happens of uh, which is related to TRIPS, India claims at international arena that our domestic laws are compliant to TRIPS. So because of which lot of things that we can do, uh, basically we do because we are TRIPS compliant. Uh, we'll discuss about this, uh, what we can do. Basically compulsory, compulsory licensing, uh, evergreening, protection against evergreening. So all these things that we are able to do because our laws are strictly compliant to TRIPS. We follow all the rules. All right. So we are fully compliant. Our uh, act was amended in 2005 to provide product patent also. Earlier protection was available only to processes. So uh, let me explain this briefly. In this what happened was before 2006 <clears throat> only the process was allowed to be patented. That means this is the process of creating a product and then you get a product. Alright, now if the same product is manufactured using same process different than the patent there will be no infringement. Basically that means Let's say, uh, let me just change the screen. Hold on. Just a second. Hmm. So uh, before 2006, only process was allowed to be patented. So let's say there is a process of producing a thing. Okay. And then the product comes out. So you could ha have patented only this before 2006. So before 2006, okay. After 2006, what happened? So uh, uh, now here, what the issue that was coming was if somebody used a different process, but created the same product, there was no infringement of patent, right? But after 2006, product and process both are now allowed to be patented so if somebody is creating the same product right from different process then 
they uh, they will infringe they will break the law earlier that was not happening earlier you were allowed only to patent process not the product so people used different process to create the same product that you are selling and then they would say that we are not breaking any law so after the amendment now product and process both are patented so nobody can now cheat you <clears throat> all right so this is uh, trips and in india now let's see the ipr in india ipr activity in india has grown a lot especially in the last 15 years because uh, now lot of patents are being filed lot of research is being done and patent filing has almost increased nine times in the last 15 years so it's a quite a good development so in india what are the different types that are available patents design trademark uh, gis geographical indications we read about them in uh, you know P, uh, prelims semiconductor and integrated circuit layout design plant variety and protection farmer right so let's quickly see everything patent so patent is a right which is exclusive to the person that is given all right so somebody invents something and the sovereign state in which they invented that thing let's say a person invented something in india so india is a sovereign state so india will give that person an exclusive right all right to Uh, use that for a limited period of time now this is done because the law wants to promote scientific research new technology and industrial progress because everybody wants like i said the profit from their invention right <clears throat> now in india patent act 1970s there it was amended in 2006 i have shared why it was amended all right now ministry is department of industrial promotion uh now dip has been renamed to department of sorry department for promotion of industry and internal trade internal trade so dpii it has changed from dip to dpii all right so patent is given for 20 years evergreening is not allowed we'll discuss this compulsory licensing this is there in our patent law we'll discuss about this data exclusivity we'll uh, we'll discuss about this also so these three terms will be discussed <clears throat> now for regarding data exclusivity indian patent law does not allow for data exclusivity the term or the idea of data exclusivity is coming from article 39 sub article uh, sub part 3 of the trips all right so basically these two features evergreening and compulsory licensing licensing these two are very important as they strike balance between two things rewarding the person who actually is creating the patent and looking out for the rights of underdeveloped and uh, developing countries so that we get medicines at an affordable cost you will see how it is done so first let us see about evergreening if you see the term evergreening this basically means always green that means always positive for you for the inventor so in this people try to create a small change in the medicine or in anything or in any product and then they try to keep patenting it they will make a small change but that change will not be significant it will not be that important that will be a small change which will not change anything are you getting so they basically they are trying to fool because they want to extend the patent by 20 years more so want they uh, so that they can earn a lot of profit so evergreening is basically a scam all right now how to protect against this so section 3 sub part d of indian patent act 
it was introduced in 20, 2005, states that for a new form of, of an existing substance to be patentable, it should show an enhanced efficacy. That means if you want to patent the same product again, all right, but you change, of course, you change something and you want to extend the patent that should show that you, the change that you uh, did that should show that you have improved the efficacy or effectiveness of the product. For example, let's say there is a medicine. Now in that medicine, uh, the person has just changed a chemical structure slightly, but that has not resulted into increased effectiveness of the medicine, right? So that will be considered as evergreening. But if person has changed something in the chemical of the medicine and it has resulted in better medicine, then the patent will be given. I hope you get it. All right. <clears throat> so in this, uh, this section actually prevents pharmaceutical companies from evergreening, like I said, uh, in which they just make small, small changes without increasing the drugs therapeutic ability. And section 3D makes our law a bit tougher than trips also uh, this is very good because this shows that the law is actually for protecting the interest of the society now this obviously does not go down very well with the us who uh, has a lot of pharma companies and they want it to be removed so there was also a case novartis drug uh, novartis drug uh, glivac all right so in that, uh, the no, Novartis changed slight, uh, something slightly and then, uh, they, of course, uh, the patent was rejected and then case went on and Supreme Court finally said that IPO, uh, the rejection of uh, patent by the Indian Patent Office is valid and legal and the patent was not given to the medicine which was only, uh, which was not changed significantly. So this is an important case, Novartis case in which the evergreening was upheld. Next, we come to data exclusivity regarding compulsory licensing. We'll discuss that uh, when we discuss pharma section. So data exclusivity is important. Right now, it is quite important because of COVID. All right. First of all, like I've told you, Indian patent law does not provide for data exclusivity. Now, what is the issue? Listen carefully. Now, a lot of companies that, that develop drugs, they spend a lot of time and energy and money on clinical trials. Remember that, clinical trials. Now, during this, they gather a large amount of data. Okay. So when they uh, try to launch the medicine, they have to give this data to authorities. But by data exclusivity, these companies want that authorities should not share such data with any third party for a certain period. All right. So this is the data exclusivity. Till now, this is not there. Data exclusivity is not there. The authority like Indian Patent Office in this case, they can share data with other companies. Now, why is this happening? Because people want to uh, earn money from the money invested in clinical trials also. Okay. That is the issue. So basically it's all about uh, money making. So, uh, they should not be done. In my opinion, they should not be done because uh, the companies who can manufacture drugs, but they don't have the uh, time and money to invest in clinical trials because clinical trials basically take one to three or even one to five years. So it's a lot of time. So if you are manufacturing the same thing, but in a different, uh, basically by a different company, same thing is manufactured by a different company. So why? to do the same clinical trial again. It's like two friends sharing an assignment, right? Or let's say I have a standard book and my friend doesn't. So I'll be making notes on the standard book and giving the standard book to the, uh, to my friend. So of course it saves money and time and everything. So why not to do it? So that is the thing. So where is it coming from? 
now there is article 39.3 in trips all right so here there is a term called unfair commercial use now this you don't need to read all of it but i'm just telling uh, you just need to remember article 39.3 and there is a term in that article unfair commercial use now this thing this unfair commercial use thing is being uh, misinterpreted by the people and they are saying that here data exclusivity already is there in trips but it is not there the article 39.3 just says that if somebody is you know approving some pharmaceutical or agriculture uh, agricultural product the data that is submitted that should not be used unfair in an unfair manner that means somebody should not steal it somebody should pay for it and then they can use the data that is the thing but here they don't want payment for it they want that nobody should be using that okay so again uh, it's a bit technical thing but the point is you need to understand that people collect data during clinical trials and they don't want it uh, they don't want to share that data with anyone all right so this is quite uh, an important deal because it was going on during the covid issue now data exclusivity is opposed on the following grounds like separate clinical trials will increase cost so don't give data exclusivity right there are ethical issues like i said in uh, human trials you would have to get more humans to experiment on right obviously you need to test your medicine so you need more humans on which you can test them or test the medicine trips agreement also uh, mentions does not mention at all data exclusivity this term is not mentioned it is the interpretation of the uh, proponents of data exclusivity all right now this can become an alternative to evergreening it is not patent data exclusivity is not a patent all right if if the company gets data exclusivity then they can obviously increase their monopoly more and more and which is obviously not good for developed and underdeveloped countries because all these things are coming from uh, companies who are in first world or developed countries now uh, let us come to ipr in the pharmaceutical sector why this sector because some sectors are very sensitive to ipr issues especially the pharma sector so let us explore this sector briefly uh, we will be studying about uh, uh, the problems that are there in this sector just related to patents only of course now we will understand the terms generic uh, drug and brand name drug we will be uh, reading about compulsory licensing so what is generic drug we hear a lot about this hai na so what is a generic drug now these are those drugs which are manufactured after the 20 year period that means the patent for that medicine does not exist anymore so uh, let's say this is the drug a and 20 years have passed now it is free for anyone to manufacture the process and the product is free nobody uh, has to pay anything to the original uh, manufacturer so now the uh, the in in india this is the thing that uh, we manufacture a lot of generic drugs now what is brand name drug simple the any drug uh, on which the patent is active simple so when anything is patented you cannot produce it without the consent of the patent holder and you have to pay a royalty all right now here we will study about compulsory licensing compulsory licensing is a phen uh, phenomena or you can say a term in which a person is allowed to manufacture a patented medicine all right without the permission of the original owner let me explain so till now i have uh, in the last slide i showed that there is a medicine called a it is patented and after 20 years it is free to be manufactured by anyone but during this 20 year period 
if we want that medicine then what then also it can be done but it is done only in uh, very rare cases and only if some conditions are not fulfilled like uh, the medicine is very costly like that one of the condition is that uh, one of the condition is if the medicine is medicine is very costly <clears throat> so in compulsory licensing what will happen the country any country can allow somebody else to produce this medicine a in the 20 year span but without paying any royalty fee getting my point so that is compulsory licensing so this uh, but uh, you have to pay something but not that much it will not be a very high amount basically it will be something lower than the usual cost otherwise why not just go directly to the owner and ask for permission so in essence a compulsory license in that a person can use somebody else's intellectual property without the permission but by paying some small fee all right and this is done uh, this was done once in india only once we don't misuse this this is there in our patent law but we do not misuse it misuse it because we understand that everybody wants to earn money from their invention so this is basically an exception and not the rule all right <clears throat> so basically one, only one case has been uh, re recorded in india which is uh, for natco pharmaceutical so does it have to be an emergency not really the compulsory licensing can be given in one case like for an example if the drug price is too high all right but of course uh, during emergency also it can be done it's not necessary that it uh, it can be done only in emergency so there are two or four or five things which is obviously out of our syllabus but two important things are yes it can be done during an emergency and secondly if the cost is too high of the medicine so in march 2012 india granted its first compulsory license ever and this is the only one this license was given to the indian generic drug manufacturer natco pharma for a cancer drug that was patented by the buyer patented by buyer the medicine was sorafenib tosilate all right so basically india is a huge market for generic drugs we are a huge manufacturer we are a huge exporter also we are a huge consumer also all right so here you can relate uh, novartis case which i have talked about before regarding evergreening it was a case uh, which was uh, settled by supreme court okay it was a seven year long case fought by novartis and supreme court held the decision of indian patent office that the company novartis is trying to evergreen the drug okay <clears throat> next section that we have to see is other intellectual property rights like designs trademarks we will see them briefly we don't need to go in much detail we will see the laws that are related to those iprs and uh, what i say ministry basically all right designs now the law that covers design is design act 2000 and the ministry is a ministry of commerce and industry that uh, department is dpii like i've discussed before now i want to give an example here see apple iphones they are manufactured in china but they are designed in california or basically usa so the profit that goes to china is almost two to five percent only even though they are fully manufactured over there so that is the importance of design 95 to 97 to 98 percent cost or uh, the revenue goes to apple right because the designing and the research is done in usa hence designs are very important now coming to trademarks trademark is basically a name a word phrase logo symbol anything all right image or whatever so it is covered under trademark act 1999 and again same ministry and department geographical indications 
these are basically uh, symbols which are used on a product that tells the uh, user that uh, this is from particular origin uh, geographical indications of good act is there and same department and ministry copyrights copyrights are basically they are uh, legal right uh, copyright is a legal right which is given to a creator of a original work it can be a poem also it can be a short story it can be a music uh, musical work like song right it can be like a drawing or a painting or things like this so act is copyright act <clears throat> which was amended in 2012 uh, ministries copyright office ministry of human resource and development which is all right plant varieties there is a law for this which is protection of plant varieties and farmers right act we'll uh, study about this in the next lecture semiconductors and integrated layouts it also has a law semi semiconductors and integrated layout design act uh, department of electronics and it ministry of communication and it traditional knowledge now this is important uh, many times question has come on this traditional knowledge basically is the knowledge that we have from our ancestors or our general knowledge of our herbs right of our uh, spices all these things so traditional knowledge is basically uh, called as ghar ke nuskhe right uh, uh, usage of haldi usage of other uh, spices to treat the ailments and so on so traditional digital knowledge traditional libra uh, library has been created and in traditional knowledge digital library our digital our traditional knowledge has been digitized and it has trans, it has been translated into five international languages and this database is then given to international patent offices so that some company should not be able to steal our traditional knowledge all right it's a collaboration between csir and uh, department of ayush ministry of health and family welfare all right uh, because of this india had foiled the colgate palmolive bid to patent nutmeg mouthwash which was a traditional knowledge in india and due to traditional knowledge digital library this patent was foiled right now let us come to acts and schemes first which we will discuss is biological diversity which act under this biological uh, biodiversity act 2002 again this is a environmental topic so not going to go in very depth in it but the law for biological diversity and its uh, patent protection is biological diversity act 2002 <coughs> which was created in pursuance of cbd convention on biological diversity 1993 now cbd is a legally binding multilateral environmental agreement okay it has three things conservation of the diversity of biology then sustainable use <clears throat> of the diversity and ensuring fair and equitable sharing of benefits of such use now why have i highlighted this here because this is the one which is important from the angle of patent so people who are coming in india or to india for research for researching local resources local biological resources should not be able to uh, copy it or take it away without letting the locals benefit basically they should not be able to steal the information all right basically this is protection against bio piracy okay so because of this act national biodiversity authority is created state biodiversity authority is also created <clears throat> and before taking anything away from india you have to take their permission so it is i hope now you understand that ipr is a very sensitive issue because you have to promote the business also and you have to promote the interest of the local populace also so this act creates a wonderful balance in that next let's come to the scheme okay one of the scheme uh, which is a kapila campaign it's an acronym for kalam program sorry kalam program for intellectual property literacy and awareness in this basically 
students who are pursuing higher education they will get the information about the patent process all right so that if somebody develops something they know what to do so basically that's a information and educational campaign iec iec campaign all right another scheme that is there is patent prosecution highway program now this is a set of uh, initiatives which will provide for faster patent prosecution by sharing information between the patent offices for example uh, in the photo you can see japan and india have agreed to launch a bilateral patent prosecution highway in this let's take an example if somebody from uh, basically if some company goes to japan and files a patent for something that is <clears throat> basically or if uh, forget this a uh, better example would be if somebody is using or basically breaking some patent but in another another country so how would india come to know about it so by doing this collaboration japan will let us know that such thing is happening with respect to a indian patent so this is the thing so this will basically uh, see this term accelerated patent prosecution that means whenever something is uh, or when if somebody is uh, breaking the patent the prosecution will be accelerated because of the sharing on information between japan and india this will of course reduce the patents uh, this will also act as a <clears throat> this uh, pph this will also act as a place where lot of patent application will be filed all right so this is very good for uh, indian inventors and startups uh, that are coming on in india so that they can get faster uh, patent application approved in japan and similarly for japan people so whatever things you want to develop your interest will be secured and if somebody tries to steal your technology or patent then also it is secured coming to an index global intellectual property index 2020 India has been ranked 40 out of 53 <clears throat> even though India has shown some improvements but still the rank was not that much improved this is given by US chamber okay <clears throat> so global intellectual property index 2020 so what are the challenges of india according to this index this index has given some challenges so basically uh, the requirements are quite high they say in india then enforcement is enforcement is quite weak in india compulsory licensing the those uh, companies hate this feature patent opposition sometime uh, things are not approved regulatory data protection transparency in reporting seizure by customs singapore treaty of law and patent law treaty okay again uh, don't need to know in much depth but again this is a index which is given by some other countries uh, think tank so not much Uh, attention should be given but still it's an international index so we should know about it now what is the status of india and international cooperation as i've told before that india is a member of wto it it is trips compliant all right india is also a member of wipo then uh, there are several agreements that india is part of or several treaties like budapest treaty paris convention bern convention these two are very important marrakesh treaty is also very important because under which under this treaty it was decided to give access of lot of books to visually impaired persons also in 2019 union cabinet approved uh, international classification system of wpo all right uh, they approved nice vienna and locarno agreements all right so india is compliant india is following all the rules so that is a very good thing <clears throat> now why ipr is important let's uh, let's just have a brief discussion on this see first of all we need to protect the innovative and innovative spirit and the innovation all right because people work hard for their innovation if we protect the legal right of the innovator the ipr regime will encourage innovation 
if we do not have a healthy IPR regime in which we protect the innovators interest then of course people will stop innovating of course they will right they will not feel motivated they will feel that if I invent something and then I go to patent office and then it get leaked and uh, and if I don't get the patent then what is the fun of it because obviously people put in five years ten years twenty years of their life to do one thing right now coming to the second point economic growth see without economic growth the country won't grow it is the catalyst right if we have a robust IPR regime we will have good amount of innovation that is the assumption and that is how it works also so IPR help creators and inventors to realize their potential so they will create some new processes new products and that will help in business uh, help businesses grow help employment grow so ultimately good for economic growth right now if there is a good IPR regime it will encourage investment in research and development because the organization that are putting in money for researching for the, which are buying instruments for creating more and more products or researching more and more products if the investment they will uh, if the return is received on the investment the universities the uh, companies will invest more in research and development and India has a lot of issues that will be coming up in the future based on water based on food processing based on urban living military space also space also we need to innovate you know to uh, basically space sector is also becoming quickly a good source of income for the country so investment and research is needed in all these spheres in the future to handle the issues that are coming so we need a robust IPR regime right finally uh, a good IPR regime creates a balance between individual and society the individuals creation right and society's need of proper pricing and this is done by what this is done by compulsory licensing and stopping of evergreening of licensing so these two are very good examples all right so IPR regime in India is quite good and it creates a balance between the needs of individual and the society now what are the measures to protect intellectual property in India after the release of 2016 national IPR policy the government has created investments in innovation and creativity by increasing the IP protection and enforcement so basically patents are awarded timely and then if somebody is trying to infringe on someone's payment sorry uh, patent then the enforcement is also timely then speed of processing of patent I have talked about this all right there is increased awareness among Indian innovators then enforcement is there one of the most important thing is enforcement see if you if you want to write any issue with anything in India lot of times you will find that there is lack of awareness and then enforcement these two are general things which you can write in any answer uh, you can talk this in terms of digital scams people are not aware of their power or uh, people are not aware that uh, you should not stay share the OTP that is why you, sh uh, you should uh, be aware of giving out OTP to anybody you are not supposed to so such things are aware awareness they come under awareness enforcement is the enforcement of law let's say a scam happens then what right so there are RBI guidelines that you have to report the scam as soon as possible don't hide it and so on so these two things are very common which can be uh, these are basically two small frameworks or basically this is one framework of two keywords you can apply this in any solution now uh, we need to work in uh, we need to work of course to improve the IP regime in India IP framework in India we need to take some serious steps all right we'll uh, see that in the next lecture uh, for now uh, that is all for this lecture we'll be continuing uh, with IPR policy with uh, some reports uh, some new terms that are coming like patent pool uh, uh, and challenges and way forward so in the next uh, lecture we will be discussing more of the solutions and more government policies alright 
so thank you everybody this is all for this lecture i hope you have understood things if there are anything else please let us know we'll try to solve it for you all right see you in the next lecture bye bye take care